disrupting the availability and usability of a computer system or network. Of course, even these descriptions are debatable, but that's not the uh, issue. That's not what it is uh, about. If you look at this, does anyone notice something? If you look at this sheet, is there something that sticks out? Something that you say, ah, something is kind of repeated here over and over again. Does anyone notice the ending of all these sentences? Huh? It's, uh, it's a lot of ordinary crime but then related to uh, computer systems and computer networks. And this is a very interesting fact when it comes to law. Because, um, for example, in the I don't know about other countries, but I know in the Netherlands there's constantly the debate, should we make yet another law? Uh, I mean, uh, if we go back to the first slide, Moses could do it with 10 laws, not 10 commandments. And uh, that's, uh, that's all. And there's something to be said for that. Uh, 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 not that I want to be a preacher here. Uh, yeah, let's uh, thou shalt not. But, uh, no, no, no. But there's something to be said for simplicity in laws. Uh, because uh, if it, especially if, if you look at criminal law, uh, criminal law, you have to follow the rules. And if you don't follow the rule, there will be consequences. Huh? And in the Netherlands, if you kill someone, you might even go to jail. Might <laughs> 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 even. You might. Huh? Uh, but in America, <coughs> if, you, uh, if, you, if, you, if you steal a pack of gum, huh? you might never come out of jail. <laughs> uh, so, but but that, there, there are consequences. If you're a criminal, rule law, a criminal rule, basically law is nothing but rules. Right? It's rules that we have to obey. And how can I obey rules if I don't know the rules? And I, I challenge everyone, anyone here in the room to, uh, to, to list to me all the laws that are applicable, that the right word, uh, here in this space. Uh, I don't think anyone, no, maybe, maybe, maybe some very smart lawyer or a judge knows all of them, but I don't know. I, I was very impressed by my first girlfriend who was able to uh, memorize all the food codes of uh, the, the old supermarket. They didn't have the scanner there. And she knew all the, like the barcode. Huh? Every item had a number. And she knew them by heart. It's crazy. But really, I'm, uh, oh, two bag of cheese and you have all sorts of cheeses. Oh, let's go. That's fine. We get not go to Wow, I, mean, I cannot even remember my own phone number, but I was impressed. But uh, I don't think it's, it's, it's feasible to remember all the laws. But then you have to think, if, I, if it's impossible for me to know all the laws, to know all the rules, then how, I, how can I be judged by the rules? Because isn't it fair that I can only be judged through the rules that I can know of? So that's why we have... Uh, generalizations, and that's why it is maybe a very good thing to have only 10 laws, because those we can remember, and no one can say, well, ooh, I didn't know, ooh, thou shalt not kill, huh? oh, I, sh I should have killed him, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't know, I mean, uh, uh, had I known, I had not killed him, but someone should have told me. Huh? Of course, our laws have uh, generalizations, uh, there's a general rule, and it is, it is made more specific with, with specific rules and we kind of know what is, what is in it. But uh, in the Netherlands, like I said, when it comes to computer crime, cyber crime, the government tends to say, well, do we really need another law? Can we not use other laws that already apply to this general concept? Uh, because whether it is computer theft or theft, it's theft, isn't it? Terrorism. Terrorism is terrorism. Do we need to do we need to make a rule for terrorism using a computer? Do we need to make a rule for terrorism using a car? Do we need to, uh, because now we, in the Netherlands we had that incident where what was it? The guy drove with his Suzuki 
to make the rules, thou shalt not drive your black Suzuki uh, through people into the car of the queen, or whatever. Huh? I mean, uh, that's a general rule that you should not harm others, and then it will apply. <coughs> so, um, it's interesting to see how different countries, how different uh, legislators go, uh, go about right? this. But these are the problems that we face in cyberpunk. And these are the things that, when it comes to, uh, to, to, to forensics, computer forensics, this is more or less the area that we, uh, that we are looking at. Let's have a quick look, not too deep, but just a little bit a look at the European law and the EU law. Uh, the EU law has uh, several uh, variants. We have the directive, and as you can see, the, the directive is a, a mandatory, mandatory, yeah, mandatory guidelines for state law. And they always say that that's what they are after in most cases. And the, the directive is that the, if we look at the EU, maybe we should go a step back <coughs> before we start talking into, uh, start looking into this and start talking about this. The EU is a very special kind of organization because the EU is a, what is considered a customs union. Uh, a customs union is a, um, it's a, it's a, it's a vehicle for uh, international trade. Uh, the, the, there are many custom unions. Uh, uh, we have uh, uh, NAFTA, uh, I think, in, uh, in North uh, America. We have the African Union, the union in Africa. And we have all sorts of, uh, of customs unions. In international trade, the problem is that a lot of countries try to protect themselves against other countries in all sorts of ways. And they can do that in so many different ways. They can say, oh, uh, uh, products that come from other countries uh, have higher taxes on them. Uh, America, for example, does this with steel. Um, but many other products as well. Or they can say, well, we favor our own uh, industry by giving them um, uh, money, uh, government money. For example, Europe and America both do this with their, um, uh, what is it, Boeing and uh, Airbus. Now they get money from the government, and which is more or less not allowed. Because, well, it's not allowed, but I mean, both, so it's, it's like the whole cycling A-pole thing, that if everyone is using A-pole, <coughs> yeah, it's, it, it, well, and it's the same thing with the airlines, you shouldn't do it, but well, they do it, and if I don't do it, I'm not a player, so I'm also doing it at the So, uh, in order to, uh, to regulate that, there is a treaty, a, a, a sort of treaty, which is called uh, a customs union. And it basically means that you have the same rules for the outer border for uh, taxation and, and items that are allowed in and out. And within the customs union, there is, there's no customs. Uh, there's no uh, you don't have to go to customs, there's no extra taxes on products, it's the same market, so to speak. And the EU is set up, it is, it still is today, a customs union. And there are a lot of people who want to take it further, and they say we want <coughs> a federation, like the USSR used to be, or uh, America is. Uh, uh, and, and then it becomes more of a, of a state, right? you get like a, maybe a European passport, right? okay, or, uh, well, you can go even further. But legally, there is a huge difference between the United States, or that which is a, a federation, or a customs union, which is, which is Europe, the EU. Because the customs union, it really is independent member states. Every country is sovereign. So there is no legislation above the country. The country is what? Let's take the Netherlands, for example. Yes, we have to obey the, the rules of the EU, but we are a free country. And if we don't like the rules, we can 
side of We go out of the EU. Of course, as long as you're in the EU, you have to follow the rules. It's, it's the, the treaty that you have. And you have to, to, to play the game. But you can say at any moment, I don't want to play the game anymore. And I'm, I'm, stepping, I'm, I'm breaking the contract. There's a possibility to get out of the contract. And you get out of the contract, and that means the EU border will be at, at your border. And you are not part of the EU anymore. Of course, this is not feasible uh, for all sorts of reasons, because especially for a country like the Netherlands, it would mean practically suicide because uh, of uh, uh, trade. Uh, and we are very dependent on trade. So it's, it's a win-win it's a situation for the, for the Netherlands, the EU. But it is very important to, uh, to understand that difference that the EU is nothing but a treaty, uh, a signed contract, between independent countries. And legally they have very little uh, power over each other, other than by the contract. Uh, and every, every member state can, at any moment they can say, I'm out of the contract, I don't want to play this game anymore. Um, so, because of that, they would like to, uh, to use the directive from the central body of uh, power, uh, which uh, we have several central bodies of power, and the Parliament, and the, the Council of Europe, and uh, there's a lot. Uh, and if they make a directive, it means that they, uh, they tell the member state what laws they should have, and they are, it is med as it says, it's mandatory for the state to implement these laws. The advantage of this is that you can use the law system that is within the country. Uh, because if it's a Dutch law, the Dutch judge can, can uh, judge whether you obey the law or not. Um, and these systems are already in place. And you see these games a lot in, um, in, in Europe, where people take it to the European court or to the Dutch court, and they start pointing to each other. Uh, uh, some, sometimes cases are taken to the European court, and the European court says, it's Dutch law. You should go back to the judge in the Netherlands if it's not a European uh, issue. Um, you can only go to the European court when the deadline expired. Uh, so, for example, this happened to the Netherlands as well, a few times. That the European Union says you should make laws about, I don't know, labor laws, about times of labor, something like that. And then the Netherlands has five years to uh, int uh, implement these laws into its own law system. But of course, as pe Dutch people know, uh, and it's probably not different in any other country in Europe, it takes a long time. Because it's the bad ah, we want it like this, we want it like this, we want it like this, <coughs> and we have to come to an agreement. And they were too late, and they missed the deadline. And when they missed the deadline, then you can go to the European court. Because the Netherlands, in this case the Netherlands, should have had a national law to protect your right as a European citizen, but they didn't make the law in time, and then you can go to the European Union, and you can say, hey, uh, there is no law, uh, and there shouldn't be no law, so now I'm asking you to, to take action. Usually what happens is that uh, they uh, fine the country. The Netherlands also got a few fines like this. <laughs> they have to pay uh, money to the European Union, and uh, teach you a lesson to next time implement it soon. Huh? Uh, other uh, ways of uh, changing the, or creating law in Europe are international treaties. They're binding law. And for example, we have we now have the treaty with the American with the USA huh? about sharing data. And uh, the member states gave the power to the EU by contract that they can act in their name. Um, and it, this has advantages has disadvantages because uh, now the EU can act as uh, they can speak for the Netherlands, for example, or for Germany or for France or whatever, and uh, they can say, oh, the Netherlands wants this, which is kind of scary, but it's also kind of good because now they, they only have to do one, they only have to do the negotiations once and they have a lot more power. Hey, in the old days, and I'm going back to the Netherlands as, a, as, a, as an example, because the Netherlands doesn't have a lot of power uh, when it comes to America. To illustrate this, America already signed a law 
to invade the Netherlands, uh, should it happen that an American citizen was uh, taken uh, hostage or captive uh, by the International Court of Law, which they don't uh, uh, agree to, huh? and which we all know that is in, or probably know that is in Den Haag, and it has a prison, and they already signed a law, it's incredible, that it already passed the Senate, I'll uh, come to you in a minute, it already passed the Senate and the, uh, what is it, the, the Congress, uh, that it's okay. If, if, if they want to free it with some sort of military action, it's fine. You get the, um, and the Netherlands was like, okay, because yeah, what can we do? It's a tiny country, we really don't want to lose the trade. America is one of the most important trade partners to the Netherlands, so you're kind of on your back and you have to take it. And, uh, and as, as an EU, you, have, you are a larger group, you have more negotiating power. Yeah. So basically you're summing this up as with the European Union, the Netherlands had more power in negotiations with terrorists. With terrorists? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, either a group uh, threatening uh, deadly force yeah. in case of something which is accepted by the international community, the United Nations, yeah. basically just defying law as law holds for Dutch citizens. If I do something wrong here, I will have to go to court. Um, the United Nations, <coughs> if somebody does something wrong with the country and does genocide, we have this court in half which yeah. will take care of. Yeah. And if you don't agree to this definition, you could also agree to the definition of terror, which originated from France, where yeah. it was first constituted, that terror is any form of um, state force, yes. enforcing fear on the citizens, <coughs> and either way is done by the United States, and basically you're just proposing that, uh, yeah, well, they are bad, but now we at least can somewhat. It's the reality. It. Sadly, that's the reality. I mean, uh, I have no other explanation why uh, the Netherlands did not uh, object to this, uh, to, uh, there's many more examples, so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very interesting to see how the uh, how how the, the international uh, chess game is played, huh? and uh, like exactly like the, the Eastern Europeans got bribed huh? uh, by by America to, uh, uh, to also reject the international court of law. Huh? Countries like Romania, Bulgaria, uh, Poland, uh, they all uh, uh, got uh, a lot of money from the United States in uh, in in, uh, in exchange for not accepting the International Court of Law. It's, it's, that's just the international game of chess that they play. And it is scary, uh, because I think, but that's my personal opinion, I think we, we, we need uh, more central uh, uh, law. Uh, we, need, we, need, we need an institution like the International Court of Law, very badly in this world. And uh, uh, we will, if, if we go further into the uh, into the presentation, we will see that quite the opposite is happening, even in the Netherlands uh, and in Europe. There's a very scary uh, new law, in, uh, you, you see that things are changing, which is, in my opinion, uh, at the least very interesting. Now let's have a look. Uh, so we have uh, directives that are guidelines for the in, for the member states. International treaties uh, between uh, countries, where the EU can uh, sign or, or negotiate for all the member states, more or less to get more uh, power uh, over the negotiations. Uh, there is regulations. Uh, a regulation is a binding law for entities, which are typically states, uh, but it can be a regulation for, for example, the Netherlands or for a specific. Uh, uh, industry, uh, the industry should do this, or uh, which is binding. So that is law made by the EU. A decision, and a decision is uh, again binding law for uh, specific uh, entities. And uh, verdicts from the EU Court uh, of Justice. So the EU Court of Justice can also. Um, and if the Court of Justice makes this, uh, a verdict. In this uh, jurisdiction, jurisdiction, huh? how is the word? Uh, in Dutch is jurisdiction. 
if, a, if, if one judge has made a, a verdict, then it is only fair that the judges after that judge mm -hmm. have to make a similar decision, at the least look at the first decision and more or less follow that decision uh, if it wasn't uh, if it wasn't rejected at the first decision. <coughs> Well, that's a pretty interesting thing because we do not only have case law states in Europe, we also have um, states where the judges themselves are independent as long as the ruling is not done by the highest court in the country. Yeah, true. So it's far from perfect. It's far from easily mergeable. Yeah. Oh, uh, and also, yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, it, uh, legislation is, is very difficult. International legislation uh, is a, it's, it's, and it's becoming more and more of a challenge. And we are in the middle of this. Huh? As uh, in the field of uh, digital forensics, I mean, computer, we have the internet is worldwide. We have uh, in the Netherlands crimes are committed by people from other countries, and maybe uh, they are part of a network which reaches yet to another country. Or it's, it's there are so many. Uh, uh, jurisdictions involved, and then which one counts, which laws count. I mean, it's it's very difficult, and that is why I say I I'm a, I'm a strong uh, believe, I, I believe very much in the international court of law. I think uh, that is that should be the way to go. But that's my personal opinion. No? I mean, and I'm uh, you see quite the opposite at the moment. That more and more countries are taking their own. Also because the International Court of Law, is, uh, uh, as it is now, was not created for that purpose. It, it was created for more for war crimes in that direction. Uh, so, and this, not for petty theft like this. I mean, someone stealing your credit card, you have an international, that's, that's kind of ridiculous, they say. But I don't know. It's, uh, uh, we have all these different jurisdictions that come in, uh, in place. Um, in uh, in the EU, in the EU, we have the da Data uh, Protection Directive. Personal data should not be processed unless there is tra transparency and legitimate purpose and proportionality. Um, this is an, uh, an I EU directive. So, if we go back to the directive, that means that member states should make this into a law. But it's not a law. Member states, states like the Netherlands. Uh, or Germany or France or Belgium, they have to create laws to obey to this directive. And the directive says um, there should be transparency, legitimate purpose, and proportionality. And <coughs> otherwise, the data should not be uh, processed. Transparency, the subject uh, has given uh, uh, his or her consent so that it's okay to use the information. It's necessary for performance or contract necessary for legal compliance, necessary for, to protect uh, the subject, necessary for performance of public interest, that's a little bit a difficult one, uh, which means uh, the government, more or less, necessary for uh, legitimate interest, except <coughs> when overridden by fundamental rights, and you have the right for deletion. And so you have the right to get <coughs> your data taken out of the system. Uh, if you don't, if, yeah, you can withdraw your consent. Us, which is uh, very uh, important. So um, you see that uh, in the EU we are quite strict on privacy or privacy, at, at least on paper, because if you see how easily they give it away, for example, to America, uh, it's very strange for me to see that. It's very odd for me that uh, in the Netherlands, I, again, I take the Netherlands as an example because. Of course, as a Dutch person, I know most about the Dutch system. Uh, for example, our passports are all made in the United States. Huh? And they have the fingerprints and the, 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 the digital picture, and they are made in the United States. Yeah, it's crazy. You don't seriously do that, do you? Yes. Yes. Uh, Dutch passports and identity cards are actually made in the United States. And you know why? This is, this is where it becomes interesting, and this is where you see, I don't know about German, uh, where the German part We have the Bundesdruckerei. Uh, no, the, the Dutch government... Uh, well, 
Germany yeah. has its own printery thingy for oh. money and those documents. It's privatized by now, but they're they trying still, to get it yeah. back. Interesting, yeah. And it's still residing in Germany. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, but, but this is, again, this is, well, we don't have to go into it, but it's very interesting to see the, uh, the reason is that the United States kept, uh, it, was, it, it started a long time ago, when uh, the Dutch passport was one of, one of the most forged passports in the world, it's one of the, one of the favorites, huh? 